I'm Carl Spurl, and today I'm going to be talking about an audio amplifier and speaker system that you could find in a common cell phone. Now, throughout this presentation, I'm going to be discussing how changes in the input signal and adjustments to the voltage bias and resistive load of the system uh, can affect your Vout of the system. I'm also going to talk about how the speaker can interpret this output signal and use the signal then to create sound that you hear. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the signal response of the amplifier circuit due to the input uh, signal. So here our input signal is a given magnitude of a cosine wave uh, and our output is going to be this equation right here. So how do we come to this Vout conclusion? Well, it's important to note that the audio amplifier is an LTI system. And what that means is that the frequency of your input signal is going to be the same as the frequency of your output signal. So what this means is that we can take our input signal and multiply it in the omega domain by the frequency. Uh, so what we're going to end up having an output as is the magnitude of the frequency multiplied by the original signal that has a shifted phase of the given frequency. So what will happen when we change the amplitude of this input signal? If it's a very very low amplitude such as 10 millivolts here what's going to happen is we have a spike, a delta spike, at the frequency that we're running it over. So in this case, our frequency response is set to uh, 1 kilohertz. And so we have a spike at 1 kilohertz and obviously a DC response as well, a DC component. Now, how we can go looking about this is uh, through a Taylor series approximation. That's how we can approximate sinusoids. So when we have a very small amplitude, like 10 millivolts, we can use only the first two uh, sections of this Taylor series approximation because the x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, those values are going to be so small that uh, they'll just meld with the noise floor of the signal here. However, if we scale amplitude up to, say, 200, uh, we have a larger x value then. And what that means is we're going to start seeing uh, developments of different harmonics. So instead of just having a spike at the 1,000 uh, hertz mark, we also have a spike at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. And those are all due to these Taylor series approximations because we can no longer ignore x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth. What this means is that then it's not a linear system anymore. So it becomes harder to approximate using that linear system analysis that we used for the first one. Uh, so we're going to want to keep amplitude low in order to be able to analyze this in a good manner. Now, how does the biasing of voltage affect the gain of the system? Well, if we use small signal analysis on the latter half of the original circuit here, uh, we can see exactly how the voltage bias will affect it. So our voltage bias can also be written as VGS because our voltage bias is the DC uh, voltage source at our VGS side of the MOSFET. So we can use these to approximate different values in our small signal circuit. So GM is VGS minus VTH, and uh, our R0 is our 1 over VGS minus VTH squared. Now, what does that mean? It means as our voltage bias increases, we're going to have a smaller and smaller R0. And we can see that conceptually through here. So as we take uh, an input signal over here, and if we raise our voltage bias, our R0 is going to shrink more and more, meaning that more of the power is going to be put into the ground of the system and not across the load of the system. Now what that means is we have a smaller overall gain of the system. Now the opposite is also true. 
So if I were to decrease the voltage bias, you're going to have an increase in R0, and that's going to result in a larger amount of power flowing across the uh, resistive load, which will result in a increase in the gain. And that will happen until you reach the saturation region of the system. So how does our load resistance affect the gain? Well, if you increase the load resistance, you're going to have a larger gain. Now, why is that? So if we take our gain of our first section over here, and our second section will then be just a voltage divider over RL to determine how the gain of the system works. So we want to increase V out because gain is V out over V in. So if we increase RL using this equation here, then the relative resistance compared to our R out, which can be calculated, will be greater, which means that we'll have an increase in V out, which will result in an increase in the gain. So that will be good for the system. So now we need to talk about what this signal uh, does with respect to the speaker itself. Well, the speaker uh, vibrates with uh, a magnetic field resulting from our static permanent magnet right here and an, an, um, and an electromagnetic field as a result of the coil right here. And so what will end up happening is if we have an increase in the current going through the coil, um, it will move in a direction, and if we have a decrease, it will move in the opposite direction. So by varying the input signal, we can cause changes in the electromagnetic field around this area that causes the coil to move up and down, vibrating the cone of the speaker. And it's those tiny vibrations that create the sound that we hear coming out of our phones.